In order to get rid of suffering once and for all, we have to stop doing bad karma. And all karma which is not connected to God is bad karma. The difference is just a matter of degree. The Bhagavad Gita explains that the art of work is to see action in inaction and inaction in action. We cannot become karma-free by giving up karma or activity because we cannot give up all activity. Firstly, we cannot stop doing activity forever. It is against our very nature as dynamic spiritual beings. And secondly, even while being supposedly inactive, we are killing so many microbes just by our breathing, bodily movements, digestion, etc. So inaction cannot free us from karma. This is what it means to see action in inaction. On the other hand, when we are not in gross ignorance, we can understand that everything belongs to God. Everything acts according to His laws. I depend completely on Him for my very existence, and I am completely under the control of His laws. With such preliminary knowledge, we can begin to spiritualize our work by working for God. Then, karma cannot touch us. For example, a soldier may kill hundreds of enemy soldiers on the battlefield, but the law will not touch him because he is working for the government. Far from being punished, he will be given an award of bravery. Similarly, when we work for God, the divine government, far from giving us karmic reactions, will award and glorify us. The spiritualization of our work is the subject matter of spiritual education, real education. Spiritual education is simple for the simple and complicated for the complicated. But suffice it to say that for all classes of people, it begins with the association of genuine spiritual practitioners. Beyond good karma, there is a karma, devotional service which brings the ultimate freedom from karmic entanglement. Devotional service provides us with four great gifts. When we practice devotional service, the Lord as Paramatma in our heart grants us the knowledge to make the right choices. All of us can, at some time or the other, hear the voice of conscience. In Sanskrit, it is called Vivek Buddhi. When we start doing something wrong, the inner voice warns us, and if we are doing something right, the inner voice approves it. Thus, when we practice mantra meditation or chant the holy names of Krishna, this inner voice becomes stronger and it guides us to make the right choices in life. Devotional service in this way can grant us the knowledge of gradually becoming disentangled from all karma. Devotional service saves us from doing further bad karma and the craving to do bad karma. Chanting of the holy names gives the inner satisfaction that enables us to say no to all the sinful pleasures of the world. Thus, 
we not only know the right choices, but we also get the willpower to make those right choices. No matter what, certain reactions are going to come to us from the past actions. But devotional service helps us in minimizing those reactions. For devotees, the Lord gives just a token reaction instead of the complete one. That token is given so that the devotee does not forget the miserable nature of this material world. Whatever be the residual karma that comes upon us, devotional service grants us the strength to tolerate that suffering. One of the names of Krishna is Karunanidhi, the reservoir of compassion. With this knowledge, a devotee may feel temporary pain, but internally because of his remembrance of the holy names, he does not suffer. And the more advanced a devotee is, the more he can experience the reality of this protection from Krishna. In conclusion, irrespective of whatever our past karma may be, the spiritually scientific process of devotional service is the best path to the highest happiness in this life and in next.